In this example, we want to calculate essentially the EMF due to a changing magnetic field. In this case, we're going to have a field that's exponentially decaying. So let's say we have this loop. It's oriented in a plane. So we have an n hat describing that plane that's pointing up. Uh, this loop, we're going to say, has a radius of 0.7 five meters, and we have this exponentially decaying magnetic field. It's constant everywhere in space, but in time it varies as uh, some constant times e to the minus t over tau. And we're going to say a, which is essentially its initial magnetic field, is 0 0.045 tesla, and this tau, which is in units of seconds, is 0. 3 seconds. And in fact, we're saying that this magnetic field is uh, same everywhere in space, but it's pointing at an angle 70 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Okay, so since this is a changing magnetic field, there's a changing flux through this loop, and that's going to create an EMF, and we want to know what that is. So let's first of all figure out what the flux is. So the flux for a uh, constant uh, uh, area, a flat surface, uh, B a dot A, where B is constant everywhere, um, or the same value uh, everywhere in space. And so this is now uh, B times the area times cosine phi. Remember, phi is now the angle between um, the magnetic field and n hat when those two vectors are tail to tail. So in fact that angle is this one because here this blue vector is the magnetic field, this yellow vector is the n hat, and so this is b, this one's n hat, and so uh, this, the angle between them then is 20 degrees. Make sure, you know, for the cross product rules, dot product rules, the, the angle that shows up in the geometric formula for those expressions is always the angle between the vectors, the relevant vectors, when they are tail to tail. Never assume that the angle given to you in any problem is the correct angle. You have to draw your picture and figure it out. Okay, so, uh, well, we know what the magnetic field is. So we can put that in, a e to the minus t over tau. The area then is pi r squared, then cosine of phi. All right, so that's the, the flux, which is uh, also a function of time. If we want to calculate the EMF due to this flux, we're going to use um, the... Uh, uh, Faraday's law, which is say that flux is the derivative of the, the EMF is the derivative of flux with respect to time. All right, so now I, I need to differentiate this thing. Well, everything's constant except the exponential, and so we have uh, a pi r squared cosine phi. There's cosine phi, pi r squared a, and now I want to take the derivative of that. Using the chain rule, I get negative 1 over tau coming down, e to the minus t over tau. All right, and so I, I'm going to, to simplify all this. I know uh, all the values here, so my EMF is a function of, um, well, I forgot my original minus sign out here as a function of time then is uh, 0 0.045, there's pi, 0.75 squared, cosine of 20, all over 0.3, then e to the uh, minus t over 0.3, and I, my calculator tells me that all of that is 0 0.249 e to the minus t over 0.3. Okay, so there's the EMF induced in the loop as a function of time, the magnitude of it. All right, so let's ask ourselves another question, which is, uh, at what time later, at what time later is the EMF one-eighth 
its original value. Original value. <laughs> oh, a typo here. Original value. Okay, so uh, what sort of does that mean? At what time is the EMF 1 8 its original value? Well, here's EMF as a, as a function of time. What is its original value? Its original value at t is equal to 0 is just 0 0.249. Okay, and so what I want to know is at what time, at some time later, is this EMF equal to uh, 0 0.249, its original divided by 8. Okay. So that's equal to 0 0.249 e to the minus t over 0.3. And now I just want to be able to solve for t. Uh, this goes away, and so we have 1 8 is equal to e to the minus t over 0.3. And so now I want to take the log of both sides. And so the log, natural log of 1 over 8 is equal to uh, negative 2.07. I give, me, give myself some significant figures here. Um, and that is then equal to the log of e to the minus t over 3, which is minus t over, well, 0.3. It's minus t over 0.3. Okay. These go away, and then multiply this by 0.3, and the time is 0 0.624 seconds. Okay, so there's the time, it's equal to one-fourth of its value. Okay, so let's let's check, does, does this make sense? Does this make sense to us? Um, so, uh, let's see. So we had this thing that was decaying at some amplitude e to the minus t over tau. And so if something's decaying exponentially, e is, is approximately 3. So e to the minus 1 is approximately 1 third, and e to the minus 2 is approximately 1 ninth. So when this is, is uh, equal to 1, it should be about a third of its value. And then when uh, when this is equal to two, it should be about uh, one ninth. And does that and so tau? So since tau is equal to point three, when t is equal to point three, it should be about a third of its value. And when t is equal to point six, it should be about a ninth of its value. And we see at point six two four we came up and said it was one eighth. One eighth is about one ninth. And so this is just sort of whether or not the answers we're getting are reasonable. They're reasonable and that's a useful check. Um, I want to take a second to emphasize how <laughs> significant this is. Because when I was solving this problem and preparing to make this video, uh, I, I got the wrong answer twice. I made two mistakes. Once, when I was up here, I was using the formula for the magnetic field instead of the EMF, and then later I had just made a calculation error. And I found both errors by doing this check that I just described. I checked to see whether it was decaying reasonably like I expected it to. It wasn't. The answer that I got was far different from what it should be, and that told me that I had an error, and I went back and found it. Never underestimate how important it is to do every sort of check to see that the answer you get is reasonable.